This video is sponsored by Upside. Hey, in this video, we're gonna fly to England, we're gonna build a bed in a shed with a guy named Ned. Actually, his name is Sam, that just fit in better there. Anyways, for our active top tier patrons, if you're signed up over on Patreon, you have a chance twice a year, two times, two times a year to win a contest where I either come out to your shop and we build a project or you come out to my shop and we build a project. So this video is the first contest winner ever and he lived in England and that's what this video is. We're going to England, we're building a bed in a shed with a guy named Sam. See, that doesn't sound as good. Anyways, watch the video. How many horses are in this field? I'm starting to wonder if um, finishing this is going to be a part of this video. All right, guys, it is uh, 11 10 at night, our time, and we're out in the new office and we had all the form submissions for the contest and we picked a winner and something crazy happened. Well, it's not that crazy, but this winner is not from these here United States. I hope we wake him up. I hope we do. I hope we do. The other thing is, I don't know how to call a number outside of the United States. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. I'm telling you, there's a country code. We gotta enter a country code. It is 7.20 in the morning over there, so. If this is an emergency, hang up and dial 911. That's it. We're driving in. This isn't his fault. No, it's not. It's that we opinion. that we don't know how to make a phone call. <laughs> so I feel like we got to keep trying. At least give them twenty four hours of us trying, so we can say we did our due diligence. Okay. Picked a winner, and you're the winner for the project oh, build. Oh, decent. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay. If you uh, so, uh, don't mind us coming and hanging out and building something together. No, it sounds brilliant. Okay. That sounds all good. That'll be, that'll be great. Are you going to talk with this weird accent the whole time? Hi, my name's Sam Smith. I live in uh, a place called South Hayton in East Sussex in England. It's on the southeast coast. But as a child, I would spend my Saturdays going around to my grandpa's, um, who lives in Essex. Um, and we'd spend every Saturday there and I used to go straight up to his garage where we would mess around sawing up bits of wood. I'd never make anything useful but it was great fun and I loved it. And during our Covid lockdown I'd started to watch some woodworking videos on the internet, one of which was Jason's. And um, yeah I followed the page a lot and I got really into it over, over lockdown. Then I joined Patreon in, oh I don't know, probably about a year ago. Um, just to get to do, do the Monday Q and A's, I really like them. It's interesting to see what questions people have. I entered the competition because it was there, and I thought it looked fun. Um, and then one evening, I was at I was in Brighton with my girlfriend, um, and it was midnight, a really unsociable time. And I got two phone calls from a dodgy-looking American number, so obviously I ignored them. Um, the bloke at the end of the phone obviously keep kept ringing me over and over and over. I thought this scammer's really keen. Eventually, Jason uh, explained that I'd won the competition. So it was a scam. Hey, welcome. Um, what do you want to see? As you can see, it's very spacious. There's lots of room around, but you can literally, you can literally not touch both sides at the same time. And that's the short length. We have the chop saw. It lives on here because the trouble is, if you want to chop anything long, wall kind of gets in the way but it pulls out and then you can chop things as long as you want there's some clamps these are all the really useful off cuts I have things like this that you could make you could make anything out of that this is the wood storage area up here and somehow the shed hasn't fallen down yet uh, there's a small planer and thicknesser I think you call it a jointer jointer planer in America but anyhow yeah it works, it works fine. Underneath the chop saw, there is a the dust extraction system. Everything's got its own area. For example, odds and ends, or tape. And uh, I've eaten a lot enough ice cream now that I can store almost everything that I need. Then there's bandsaw over here, which is on wheels. Um, 
that's a bandsaw. It's got a little sander on it, which is quite helpful. Um, yeah, so this is the sign, so I know where I am if I get lost. Um, what's it? My granddad made me this, my grandma, he made me this bench, which has been great. Um, in here, we have bandsaw blades, sand and stuff. Ooh. In here, we have, everything is second hand. Um, an old Rotex and a track saw, a couple of drills. We have to have a dehumidifier running 24 seven. But it works fine. Let's go to flippin' England. So I packed the essential things that anybody needs for a trip. A bunch of American bourbon and of course a tape measure. And I was on my merry way. I loaded up in my truck, backed out of my driveway and boarded a plane over the pond as they call it. England's a long ways away. Ah, we're in England. I just brewed myself a nice cup of tea. Oh, yuck, tea, ugh, that's disgusting. Anyways, we got here last night. We're at a nice little cottage in the English countryside. We're waiting for our boy Sam, who is the winner of our Patreon contest. He's coming to meet up with us here at the Airbnb, and then we're all gonna go to his local lumber supplier, pick up some local English white oak, and build a project of his choosing in his six foot by eight foot shed in his backyard that he calls a shop. But he makes it work, so I'm sure we'll figure it out. Anyways, let's do this thing. Mm. No, no. Yeah. Now, in America, when somebody says they're going to go pick up lumber, they mean in a truck, or at the very least an SUV. But Sam showed up in his four-door Audi, because apparently that's what you do in England. And he started driving us to his local lumber supplier. We did make a quick pit stop at the ocean so he could show us their neighbors, France. Apparently, you can see that place on a clear day which we couldn't today because of some clouds on the horizon. But I'll take his word for it. Now this wasn't like your normal lumber yard where they bring the lumber in that was milled someplace else. This was a one-stop shop, do-it-yourself everything. They bring the trees in, they mill them up on a wood miser bandsaw mill, and then they plane them all down to dimensional lumber right there on the spot. I'm pretty sure they've never swept their floor and the planer they're using, I think, is from the 1800s. But nonetheless, they were able to mill us up some beautiful English oak. Now, according to the rules of the contest, Sam could build anything he wanted to build with our help. And of course, he didn't pick something small. He picked a giant king-size bed. Not just a king-size bed, what they call in England a super king, which is bigger than a king-size bed. I said, Sam, that's gonna take a lot of wood. He said, no worries, we can fit it in my car. And believe it or not, we did. The only problem was after fitting all the wood in the car, there was no room left for me and Craig to sit. So for the hour drive home, we had to lay on top of the wood like a bunch of, well, a bunch of American idiots. But we managed to get all the lumber back to Sam's house, and it's a good thing I have a lot of practice squeezing into tight spaces because it wasn't too much fun getting in and out of Sam's car. But, whew, we made it. Now because of the size of Sam's shop, there was no way we could store the lumber in his wood shop itself. So we had to store the lumber in his house. So we had to carry it through the back door, through the laundry room where I'd hand the boards off to Sam. Sam would then carry the boards through the kitchen and into their lounge or what we would call a living room. We're gonna store all the lumber here, which means that every time we need a board to make a cut, we're gonna to have to haul them all the way out of his house, across a road, through the garden, and up to the woodshed. Now the day we showed up was quite sunny and nice, but looking at the weather forecast, we knew that rain was on its way. So before we started building, we decided to put this pop-up tent just outside Sam's shop, so we would hopefully have a dry place to work. Along with the rain, we were supposed to get 50 mile an hour winds, so it was my idea to duct tape the pop-up tent to his neighbor's fence, because 
In America, we duct tape everything, and that's bound to work. That's pretty much all we got done on day one, and that evening, Sam and his girlfriend Josie took us out for a little sightseeing on the beautiful beachy head cliffs over on the coast. Then we went to a local pub to knock out the design of his bed, and this is when I realized everything had to be designed in metric. Oh boy. This is mil. Everything I've got is in mil. Does your thing cope with millimeters? That's pretty close. 20 centimeters. Yeah, right on. Yeah. And eight inches. And so I'm saying let's slim the stretch pieces on the bottom down to four. Yeah. Um, like roughly six centimeters. What do you think of metric? I'm messing with my brain. It was 80, which is 203. But you said that was loose. It might have hurt my brain as well as my soul, but we eventually got a bed design knocked out in metric. I miss home. <laughs> it was the morning of day two, and we were finally ready to start cutting some boards. So we went to Sam's living room, because apparently that's what you do. And we picked out our boards for our side rails as well as our bed posts. Once we had the wood selected that we wanted to start working with, we did the natural thing, carried him out his back door across the road through the garden and up to our wood shop to get started. Now you can't fit a board inside his wood shop. That would just be ridiculous. So we had to open the door and I held the boards on the outside while Sam cut the boards to length on the inside. Of course his saw was so small it wouldn't cut all the way through our bed posts. But not to worry, I showed him simply by adding a little sacrificial fence to the back of his chop saw fence. We could bring that board out and make the cut away from the fence, which allowed us to, well, almost cut all the way through the bed posts. But we got them all cut to length in the end, and it was time to start working on our side rails, which meant we had to go back down through the garden across the road, through his back door, through his laundry room, through his kitchen, and into the living room to get more wood. This is becoming a theme. And then of course cutting them to length was that wonderful joy of opening his shop door and wrestling him onto his tiny chop saw. But I'm not one to complain as long as we're moving the job forward it's all right by me. Eventually we got the side rails cut to length. Next it was time to inset our bed rail hardware. Now we're using the bed rail hardware from Rockler. I smuggled this over in my suitcase and this has to be mortised into both the bed rails as well as the bed posts. So we needed to make a little jig so that we could do this quick and easy on the router. So I used some weird British super glue and made a little plywood jig. It was about this time that the weather really started to roll in. Oh goody. So we added some walls to our makeshift shop extension and clamped those to the neighbor's fence as well. While the wind howled and the rain poured, I started marking out where we needed to land our bed rail hardware on our sideboards. Once I got it all marked out, I took our little plywood jig and I just added some pieces of scrap wood onto the back temporarily so we could duplicate the position of the bed rail hardware on all the ends of our side rails. And we traced out exactly where that needed to land. Then before we cut the mortises for all of our hardware pieces, we needed to sand everything down smoothly. Fortunately, because this was Sam's project, I made him do it. After he sanded a few bed posts, he'd hand them off to me and I'd mark out on the bed posts where that hardware needed to land and trace it out with our handy little plywood jig. With each set of hardware, there are two pieces, a female version with these holes and a male version with these hooks. Anatomy. You learn it in school, kids. Next, it was time to finally start routing out our mortises for said hardware. So using some double-sided tape, we stuck our plywood template onto our bed posts and started routing out some channels. Then we cleaned them up with the chisel, leaving our template in place to use as somewhat of a shouldering block so we could get nice, clean cuts. And boom! Our hardware fit in nice and snug and perfectly flush. 
Then, with our hardware still set in place, we marked out where eventually we'll have to do a second mortise for those corresponding hooks to fit in there. But now that Sam knew how the job needed to be done, I handed it off to him, and he did a fine job mortising out the three remaining bedposts and chiseling them clean. It's really satisfying watching somebody else do work. I could get used to this. Once we had all the mortises done on our bed posts, we had to do the same thing on each end of our bed rails. So again, using some double-sided tape on our little plywood template, as well as some blocks on either side of our rails to add a little more support, we basically did the exact same thing we did on our bed posts. This time just kind of at an angle. But we got the job done in the end and our hardware slid into place exactly as it should. Sam was quite impressed at this point, and I was well on my way into fooling him that I actually knew what I was doing. Then we used these awesome self-centering drill bits from Rockler to pre-drill our holes into that end grain, and we inserted some screws. Now because this is end grain, we took our time, and I like to work those screws in and out and in and out and in and out until I finally get to our final depth. No reason to rush it. Then it was back over to the bed posts to do those secondary mortises to make room for our hooks. Now for this, we just eyeballed it, because it really didn't have to be pretty because the hardware is going to cover it up. We're just making room for those hooks to slide in and lock both pieces together. So after carving out a few channels just with a upcut bit on the router, we inserted the hardware on our bed posts as well, inserted our screws in and out and in and out, and we were ready to attach our bed posts to our bed rails, just like this. Ooh, ah, nice. Bed building in England, it's a thing. And believe it or not, that pretty much took the entirety of day two. So me and Craig carried all of the pieces back into Sam's house while Sam apparently pretended to be American. Oh, howdy there, partner. Jason Hibbs here at Bor Bourbon Moth Woodworking. We're back in the shop, ready to make some wood. Oh, shit, it's coming. That evening, Sam and Josie took us to a local event called the Lewis Bonfire Festival, where apparently people dress up in costumes and march around the city with lit torches and light off fireworks. I know we're in England, but this has to be the most American thing I have ever seen in my life. It was quite a way to end the evening of day two, and it was a night I will never forget. What a fun thing. If you're ever in England on the 5th of November, I highly recommend that you check it out. Oh my gosh, you guys. I've got some exciting news to tell you, and this, I'm just gonna preface this, because this is gonna be one of those things where I tell you about it, and you're gonna say, that sounds a little too good to be true. But it's not. This is a legit thing, and I'm obsessed with it right now. This video is sponsored by Upside. All right, so this is how the Upside app works. It allows you to get cash back on a bunch of different stuff, purchases that you're already making every day, like gas, groceries, restaurants. So you open up the app, I'm in the gas section. You enter in your location, it shows me all the different gas options that are near me. There's an offer that is less than a mile away and I can get 58 cents off per gallon. So all I have to do is claim that offer. It gives me some instructions, got it, and now I have four hours until I have to go claim this. So I'm gonna go over there and get gas and show you how it works. So you just pay like normal with your card and then the app is gonna be notified when you pay at the gas station and it's automatically gonna put that extra 58 cents per gallon in your account. And then you can build up cash in here and when you want to, you can cash out and you can have it transferred directly into your bank account or you can get it via gift cards, a bunch of different options. The cool thing about Upside is it doesn't cost you anything to use. You just download the app and then make purchases like you normally would. You're not even making the purchases through the app. You're just using your regular card. The only difference is once you make the purchases, you go into the app and you either claim it or take a picture of your receipt and then cash just magically appears in your account. 
So if you want to try it out, just go to the App Store or Google Play, download the free Upside app, and then enter the code BourbonMoth to get free cash. You can get up to $5 or more on your first purchase of $10 or more. So if you want free money, check the video description. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is lovely, Jess. Oh, there is ketchup. I can get out. Yeah, you might want ketchup. Yeah, of course. The Americans want ketchup on everything. Duh. It was the morning of day three, and we headed to what is similar to our Home Depot, although a bit smaller. And honestly, the lumber was way better quality. And we picked up the wood for our bed slats and our underbed supports, but we'll get to that later. On the docket for today is to start working on our headboard and footboard. So after selecting our wood in the living room, we carried it now through the pouring down rain, once again up to Sam's beautiful shed shop. It's funny that he had an umbrella for himself, but he didn't offer us one. What a jerk. With the rain blowing and the wind coming down, we started marking out boards and cutting them to length for our headboard and footboard. It was quite cold and windy, so I tried to lighten the mood with a song. That's annoying. Sam was not impressed, but I played on. Now, an interesting fact about Sam's shop, it has a very unique feature, which is an outdoor table saw. It's basically a table saw that can only be used outside, as well as his planer. So after ripping some boards down to the width we were looking for, we then had to slim them down by running them through his planer. Then we were ready to cut them down again on the chop saw, but fun fact, Sam only has one blade that he uses both on his chop saw and his table saw. So anytime he wants to use the table saw, well, he's got to take the blade off the chop saw, and anytime he wants to use the chop saw, he's got to go get it back off the table saw. It's super fun, and I highly recommend it in your shop at home as an added step that can make your work flow that much better. At this point, we were cutting down all the slats for our headboard and footboard. So Sam set up a quick stop block on his miter saw, and we started cutting pieces at duplicated lengths. Now these are twice as wide as we want the slats to be, but we decided to cut them first on the chop saw and then rip them down on the table saw, which of course meant taking the blade off of his miter saw and putting it back over on the table saw. Then we ripped those boards directly down the middle so we had two slats out of each board that were the exact length and width that we wanted. Sam fed them through on one side of his outdoor table saw and I caught them on the other. While Sam was cutting, I was starting to wonder how in the world we're gonna hook all these slats together into our headboard and footboard. That's when Sam did something that literally made me jump for joy and that was pull out a domino joiner that he had purchased just the day before we showed up. Thank God almighty. So with all of our pieces cut for the headboard and footboard, we carried them into his kitchen, of course, because I mean, where else did you think we were gonna have room to lay out a headboard and footboard given this situation? Now the design that Sam and his girlfriend picked out for this bed was basically a simple mission style bed with a headboard and footboard comprised of a slatted look with a top rail and bottom rail and slats connecting the two. Thankfully, because of the purchase of Sam's domino joiner, we were able to do this quick and easy. So I set Sam to work marking out each and every slat for dominoes while I tried to take a nap on his couch. But this weird British dog kept biting my beard. Get the heck off of me. 
Once Sam had all the slats marked out for dominoes, we sandwiched those slats in between our top and bottom rails, got them in the correct position, and transferred those marks onto our rails themselves. And then I tried my hardest to make Sam regret his domino purchase by making him alone mortise out almost 200 holes with the domino joiner. While I stood around and ate a delicious smoked salmon bagel, that his girlfriend made for me. But I was still a little bit hungry, so after he finished mortising out all those holes, we went out for a good old-fashioned English roast. If you've never had a traditional English roast, well, get over to England and get yourself some. It was the morning of day four, and with just two days left on this project, we had to get our butts in gear. Thankfully, I showed up that morning to find that Sam had taken the initiative to add a nice chamfer to the edge of all of our slat pieces. So with our pieces ready for assembly, I tucked them inside my rain frock. I'm starting to talk like a British person. And I carried them inside to do a little bit of finish sanding at the breakfast table. While that weird British dog stared at me. Then it was back up to the wood shop to cut down all of the pieces for our slats that would support the mattress. For our slats, we just used some birch plywood because no need to waste good old English oak. Those birch slats will sit on our side rails, but we needed to create a lip for them to rest on. So we ripped down some pieces of oak and we glued them to the inside of each one of our side rails and then we moved our glued up side rail pieces back into the living room because this is real woodworking and then we glued our second piece on in the kitchen because our wood shop has a kitchen while we waited for those pieces to dry we decided to add a nice chamfer to the bottom of all four of our bed posts just to make them look a little fresher and cleaner and it was about this time that Sam's grandfather showed up and started telling us that we had been doing everything wrong and jumped in to show us how we should actually be working. I gotta say, he did teach me a thing or two. Pretty smart guy. Then we were finally ready to assemble our headboard and footboard. So it was, of course, into the living room where everybody, Sam's dad, girlfriend, and grandfather, sat around and watched me do all of the work. I'll admit I don't have a firm understanding of the British monarchy, but I'm pretty sure it's similar to this very situation. Hey, maybe that's why Sam wanted to make a king size bed. <laughs> uh, dad jokes, which I'll say do not come off well in England. Believe me, I tried a lot. Because of the great domino work done by Sam in preparation, our headboard and footboard went together without a hitch. We decided to only glue in about every other slat, because there was no need to glue all of them in. And then once we had our headboard and footboard glued together, it was time to mortise out and hook those to our bedposts. Once again, we did this with an audience. Sam's dad and grandfather were very helpful in the true British monarchy sense of the word. The hardest part of the entire glue up was the fact that Sam didn't have a clamp longer than two feet. So we did run into some situations where we had to hook multiple clamps together to get the length that we needed, but we managed to get everything mortised out and glued together and by the end of day four, our headboard and footboard were assembled and now glued firmly into our bedposts. We were very close to having this bed complete, but that will happen on day five. Hopefully, because if it's not done, I mean, that's it. We're getting on a plane and we're going home. So really, there's nothing else we can do. <laughs> It was the morning of day five, the sun had come out, and that meant that apparently Sam decided to work in shorts and Crocs, I guess. British people, am I right? 
There was only one thing left to construct and those were the top plates for our headboard and footboard. So me and Sam got those milled up and cut the length first thing and then we were ready to get this whole bed put together. So we inserted our side rails into our freshly glued up headboard and then inserted those into our footboard. Then Sam showed up and brought us a vacuum cleaner. I don't think he really understands yet how woodworking is done. But bless his little heart. With our headboard and footboard all glued up, it was time to add our top plates to each one. Now this wasn't a necessary item, but Sam and Josie liked the look of the top plate, so we tried to give them what they wanted. So I just mortised out for a few dominoes to hold that top plate directly into our bed posts. And then we'll just add a little glue on the top rail of our headboard and footboard and glue our top plate in place. So with everything slathered up with glue, we slid that top plate into position and we added a few clamps. Then we repeated this exact same process on our headboard and just like that, all of the pieces for our bed were done and assembled. There was just one thing left we had to figure out and that was our slats and slat support system. Now for our slat support, we decided to double up two two by fours, although they're not two by fours in England, they're some weird metric thing, and run those in between our headboard and footboard using this slick hardware that we got at Rockler for this very purpose. Don't worry, I will include a link in the video description. With the hardware attached to our 2x4s and our headboard and footboard, our support slid right into place, and as you can see, it's very sturdy. Then all that was left to do was drop in our slats. Now we didn't want our slats to be rumbling and bouncing all over the place, so we got them all in and we used a bunch of spacer blocks to space them out evenly. I did get trapped under the bed in this process, but it gave me the chance to give Sam a well-deserved thank you hug. His girlfriend thought it was funny at least. Then to make sure the slats stayed where we wanted them to, we took some canvas strapping and we stapled it to each slat, on both sides as well as in the middle, to hold all the slats in place. Then to ensure that they weren't going anywhere, we countersunk and pre-drilled just a few holes in every corner and added some screws. These screws can be removed if you ever have to move the bed, but it'll just help keep the slats from bouncing around when you're jumping on the bed. And with that, the bed was completely built. It was just in the living room, which I don't think is where Sam and Josie wanted it to be. So as soon as we got it put together, it was time to take it all apart again. Now because of the tightness of our schedule and this being our last day, we weren't going to have time to actually put finish on the bed. But Sam said that finishing the bed in the living room was going to be no different than putting finish on the bed in the actual bedroom. So before we left, he asked if we could help him carry it into their master bedroom. What he forgot to tell us was their master bedroom was up the tiniest flight of stairs in their house that was built in the early 1800s. So at this point, I didn't even know if we could actually get the bed into the bedroom that it was intended for. But with a little shimmying, a little shaking, and good old fashioned American innovation, meaning that we opened the front door, we managed to bob and weave that bed into place and up the stairs. And just like that, in only five days, working in a shop that could literally fit inside my shop, we managed to build not just a king-size bed, but a super king-size bed out of this beautiful English oak. It was awesome getting to know Sam and his girlfriend Josie, and we were so happy that they were the winners of our Patreon contest. I'm really excited to do more of these throughout the year, so if you're not signed up on Patreon, please go do so. It just might be you next time that I'm laying next to in bed. Okay, that sounded 
weird, but I mean, you get what I'm saying. I mean, you don't have to build a bed. We could build a desk or we could build a, a carriage to be pulled by horses or a bridge, or maybe we could build a barrel and float down a river. The, the options are endless. Whatever you want to build, we will build. And whatever size shop you have, who cares? If we have to build it in the kitchen, it's okay. I have experience with that now. If we have to do glue-ups in the living room while your grandpa watches, well, that's not weird. Been there, done that. My point is, if you're not signed up on Patreon, you can't enter, which means that we'll never meet and we'll never build something cool together. And I really want to be your friend. So please, go sign up on Patreon now. Oh, hello there. Ever since I got back from merry old England, I can't stop talking like this, darling. And it's just, it comes out of my mouth so naturally. I sound like I was born and bred there, practically. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you follow the links in the video description. And maybe go sign up on Patreon, darling. Because there's something for everybody over there. And if you win our next competition, maybe I could come out to your humble abode. And we could maybe build something together. And you could be on one of these ramshackled old videos with me, old boy. All right, so follow the video description, check out the links, and maybe we'll, we'll build a thing or two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, just follow the video description. Go check out Patreon. Thank you to all of our active patrons. You guys support us so well, and until the next competition, enjoy. Oh, howdy there, partner. Jason Hibbs here at Bor Bourbon Moth Woodworking. We're back in the shop, ready to make some wood. Oh, shit's coming.